might have got him a little bit closer to the front. Here's Johnny Sauter riding along with Johnny. He's right behind that 11 of Todd Bodine, the good Sam Toyota. Max Gresham down on the bottom of the racetrack in the 24. Now we go back down track side to Chris Devota. Well, one of the things we love about the truck series is the mix of veterans and rookies, but sometimes th those rookies can bite the veterans. Did I hear you say you can't teach racing and I don't have time to school them all? No, no, no. What I said is you can't teach patience. And, uh, you know, you can't teach people how to drive race cars. They're, they're obviously great race car drivers. And, and uh, what happened there... You know, I, I'm not going to sit here and blame Kale for that. I mean, he got. I, I, I wish he would have kind of fell in behind us there and rode with us. I don't think he realized we were running half throttle. We were just kind of riding around there, and and most of the veterans were running half throttle, and these guys, they were bonsaiing and doing stuff. That just takes time, and, and I understand why all those veterans used to be mad at me all the time when I first came along. A former series champ, Mike Skinner. Thanks, Krista. Obviously disappointed, not the way he wanted to start 2012 in the garage before the checkered flag flies. Now, look again, that outside line led by Jason White and the gunbroker.com 23 has help from the 11 of Todd Bodine as they try to work by the two of Brendan Gone and the 31 of James Busher trying to close in on that trio of Turner Motorsports trucks that are up in front of this field. They've gained some ground by getting together. Todd's been trying to push Jason a little bit. They've, they've got up beside the Turner Motorsports triumvirate, but they're not able to do anything with it. Look at the telemetry for Todd Bodine. 187, 88. When they go into the turns, slows down just a bit, but still hard on the throttle. And plus, you got to remember, Phil, Todd's trying not only to manage how hard he runs into the back of Jason when he gives him a push, he's also trying to manage that temperature. Doesn't want to get the uh, thing overheating here. Keep it as cool as we can until we get down to the last few laps. How about the last lap that they went by? flying around this racetrack. The fastest laps we've seen from the top four trucks, all of them just over 47 second laps. About 15 of the trucks right now ran their fastest lap of the race that last lap. Chris Devoto, we heard from a dis disappointed Mike Skinner. How about the other side of the story with Kale Gale? Well, Mike Skinner was definitely hot when he got out of the truck, but then he also said that he doesn't really blame Kale Gale because he's been there before. Did you have a talk with Mike, and what did he say to you? Yeah, I mean, it's just uh, one of them things, you know. Uh, we, got, we got behind a little bit on our fuel window there, and we come in and top back off trying to get back on some track position. And I don't know what happened. We were right there in the middle of three, obviously. And the bottom line moved a little bit, moved the air through the triangle. These trucks is really tricky, tricky through the triangle. And Mike, I got loose, and Mike was on the outside there and got us. I, I hate it because both of our trucks were really good and uh, wanted to show what we had at Daytona. That's what we was all here to do. But uh, I trying to be patient. I was to the point right there. I'm like, you know, do I need to ride? Kind of wait it out. And unfortunately, we were involved. Uh, bad day for our Reem Chevrolet, but uh, we'll go to Martinsville and see if we can't do a little better. Thanks, Kale. You know. If the, if I'm, final, the final laps here, things are really heating up, Michael. Yeah, you know, and if I'm Todd Bodine, I want Jason White to keep that truck down to the left a little bit more. He goes in the corner and flares up, you lose all your momentum. We talk about side drafting. It's key if you're ever going to get to the front. you got to be right down on those trucks on the left. It's risky, but the way Jason goes in the corner and goes way up the hill, that's losing them all their ground. They're making up on the straightaways. And you gotta, you got to gain that foot at a time. Just use that side draft. Just try to gain a couple feet every corner, and then by the time... You know, in about four laps, you'll have a truck length. And Jason just doesn't keep it hard enough to the left. Ray Dunlap. I know that Michael's just seeing that happen, but Todd actually said it on the radio. He said, please relay to the 23 that you cannot exit so high. Every time he does that, he breaks my momentum. And you see Todd, he's anticipating now. He's going up high because he knows that that's where Jason's going. And look who fills the hole. Todd is shucked. Yep. Johnny Sauter right up the middle. Watch Todd drop now. Todd gets thrown to the outside and back now. As you saw Ron Hornaday move up into that spot as well as Johnny Sauter in the 13. And that was just Todd was a victim of what Jason had been doing, flaring up. Todd went to go with him. And Jason didn't go that way. 23 laps of racing to go from Daytona. Stay with us. Det tickar ner vi är på varv 78. Vi har drygt 20 varv kvar att åka bara och 
och eh, vi har eh, fortfarande, det är bara Turner Motorsports där framme. Eh, Nelson Piquet Jr. leder före Miguel Paludo och eh, James Busher på tredje platsen. Sen har eh, Brendan Gohn som vi också har sett lite grann i eh, kuppsammanhang tagit sig upp på fjärde platsen och... Eh, det såg ju lite läskigt ut där ett tag, framförallt då för, för Miguel Paludo. Men det löste sig ju till det bättre, eller hur? De tre bilarna längst fram är alltså från samma team, Turner Motorsports. Jag tror nu inte att det är en parad in i mål för dem, för att det här kommer de få fightas för. Men tre bilar längst fram, det båda är ju rätt så gott i alla fall för att... Det viktigaste är ju att någon av teammedlemmarna vinner. Inte att alla kommer över mållinjen samtidigt eller i följd även om det är en, en positiv grej. Men de kan ju köra lite blockeringsmanövrer och eh, satsa på den som ligger längst fram. I det här fallet Nelson Piquet Jr. Och eh, ta det som en, en eh, lagseger ändå för att det blir ju... Om man jobbar. Men eh, att se en massa blockeringar och sånt där. Det är ju inte särskilt kul. Så vi får hoppas att eh, det här tåget i ytterspår kan eh, komma loss. Och verkligen göra en attack mot dem där inne. Eh, och det ser ut faktiskt tycker jag som att de eh, närmar sig en aning i alla fall. Vi, eh, ja, vi har väl några bilängder kvar där. Men de skulle behöva ordna upp sig lite grann. Och... Eh, komma i mer kontakt med varandra för att få riktig kraft och komma upp i kapp med spåret på insidan. The NASCAR Camping World Truck Series is presented on Speed by Direct TV. Only Direct TV gives you dedicated driver channels so you never miss a second of your driver's race. Call 1-800 Direct TV. Brought to you in part by Coors Light. A sport this hot needs a beer this cold. Frost brewed Coors Light. The world's most refreshing beer and the official beer of NASCAR. By Napa Know How. Get the right part the first time. And by Camping World and Good Sam. Everything for the RV lifestyle, including RVs, accessories, warranties, insurance, and roadside assistance. I think Phil message delivered from Todd Bodine's spotter to Jason's spotter to say, keep her squeezed over there, bud, bud. We got a side draft because Jason's really turned up the heat on the inside line. He keeps it squeezed over to the left now. And look, they're up beside the Turner trucks again. Yeah, that's about as far as he's gotten since this restart was up about right here beside of James Busher. Still a little bit higher, and I'd like him if I want to get there, but... Things are going to heat up. Oh, they're heated up, Rick. I'm, I'm about to have a... laps to go as they cross the stripe. Here comes the outside line. Battling for second through the tri-oval. Still out front. It's Nelson Piquet Jr. That time by Jason White was scored in the second position. The outside line is moving. They've got a good tight draft. Johnny Sauter right in behind that 23 of Jason White. Ryan Hornaday right behind him. Just keep working that mirror down the back stretch. You're coming to 17 to go. He's going to push you here. That was Jason White's radio. Those guys are right there, Phil. Yeah, we could hear Johnny Sauter. He was flat on the floor. Didn't quite get to the rear bumper quick enough, as, he, as quick as he wanted to. They'll get squeezed up there in a minute. It's a good run here off turn four. Look at this pack coming right at us into the tri-oval. 17 laps of racing to go. That's Polly Haraka in the five on the outside. He's trying to stay out of the way. The 13 of Johnny Sauter battling for the third spot now, Krista. Remember, I did an earlier report saying Johnny Sauter trying to learn patience early in the race. That patience is paying off. Right now, he said he's holding it wide open or at least trying to. He restarted 15th, has moved all the way up into the top 10. Top five currently running fourth. He's talking about running with Jason White. He says, get outside. Here I come. They're dead even right now for the lead. Here comes Todd Bodine on the outside too, making it three wide back there, about six rows back of two by two. But side by side, coming out of oh, trouble. Two. Around goes the 32 and hard into the wall. Miguel Paluto hard into the wall, coming out of turn number four. Very reminiscent of Danica's accident in the duel. Caution comes out for the fifth time. Miguel Paluto running in the top three. Slides coming out of turn number four and then a head in.
collision with the inside wall and what a great sign to see that window net go down as the safety crew will get to him immediately. Mm. Wonder if he got a little bit of nudge from behind from his teammate James Busher. Everyone was trying so hard on the inside to keep that outside line from coming. Let's see if we see any contact here. He's the second car on the ins or second truck on the inside line. Wow, maybe he let off the maybe he made an evasive like action there because of PK Jr. Wow, what, the a, violence. what an impact. How how violent that was. That truck weighs 3,500, 3,700 pounds, and it flies up in the air like that and catches on fire, and yet... And I, we saw how quickly Miguel Paluto had put the window net down, was taking his helmet off. Amazing. I think he got in the back of Nelson Piquet Jr., and when, it did, when he did, that slowed his momentum, and that's, I think, James Busher got into him. Watch this now. Look. It's hard to see. You can see right there. You could see, you could see Piquet get a little bit sideways. That's real time speed right there. But I don't, I don't know if those trucks make high. I know PK got sideways, and then all of a sudden Pluto gets sideways, and these trucks handle well enough. It's hard to understand how this could have happened. Watch how close now Pluto gets to PK. I think he just made a. I think the leader just got loose, and and Pluto just made an evasive, a bit of a quick move, and he lost his truck maybe. I, th I think there was, I think there was contact. It, Let's see. Riding along with Ron Hornaday now. Watch watch the leader get sideways. You're right. I don't think there was any contact nah. he, he, from front or behind. And I think Miguel just said, oh, no, where's he going? And you remember earlier when Polly Haraka right there off turn four where the track flattens out. You're going very fast there. The banking goes away, and the trucks are light there. The back end is light. He makes a move because he sees his teammate a little bit sideways, and into the inside wall he goes. That truck spins 360 degrees in the air before coming back down on its wheels. And how about this? Miguel Paluto climbing out of that truck and will walk, wave to the fans, walk to the ambulance after such an amazingly hard hit to the inside wall. Makes you want to go hug NASCAR, Tony George, whoever all came up with these safer barriers, Dr. Sicking. Yeah, University folks at the Nebraska. University of Nebraska using a lot of their Technology. Could you even imagine hitting that with without that safer barrier there? Hmm. University of Nebraska was one of the front runners in guardrail technology that you see on the highways, and NASCAR went to them about the safer barriers, and and that really is what made Miguel Paluto able to walk to the ambulance after getting out of that truck, um, right? James Busher came on and uh, driving that AccuDoc Chevrolet said, I did not touch him. Make sure he understands that. He said the weird part was it looked like the rear wheels came clear up off the ground. And he said, I could, I had a foot and a half between him. So it was very strange whatever happened to that truck. Hermie? Yeah, Ray Nelson, PK Jr.'s crew chief, Chris Carrier, is letting uh, Nelson know that uh, he was inquiring about his teammate Miguel and what had happened, if, if there was anything that he could learn from what happened to Miguel towards the end of this race. And Chris Carrier said, hey, there was no contact. You did nothing wrong. It looked like the 32 maybe made an evasive move and uh, maybe turned the wheel too much and got himself out of shape. But uh, these guys are really comforting Nelson PK about uh, what happened with Miguel. Also telling him that on this restart, his teammate Busher should start behind him and they're trying to formulate a plan for this restart. Could there have been a little something on the track there, Phil? Maybe a little moisture? For some reason, the lead two trucks just out of control. Doesn't look like there's anything on the racetrack, but you never know. Miguel Paluto. Hard, hard hits out of that truck and into the ambulance. Det var en redig åktur som Miguel Paludo fick och tyvärr så fick hans drömmar om att starta i pole position och vinna. De drömmarna gick i kras i samband med det där och jag förstår inte riktigt vad som hände heller. Om det var så enkelt att han kanske gjorde en eh, korrigering som var lite för hastig på ratten där. Och eh, att han får in i muren. Det var en hård smäll och eh, precis som de amerikanska kommentatorerna sa. Så tack eh, för de som har kommit på det här med safer walls och de mjukare väggarna. För annars hade det där slutat eh, väldigt, väldigt illa skulle jag påstå. 
Och precis när det yttre tåget, om jag får kalla det det, var på väg förbi. Och faktiskt förbi också för att 23, Jason...